This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by Hover. Finding the perfect domain name is incredibly easy with Hover. Go to Hover.com and use the promo code KNOWHOW at checkout to save 10% off your first purchase. And by the Ring Video Doorbell. With Ring, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like caller ID for your house. Go to ring.com slash knowhow and get up to $150 off a Ring of Security Kit with their limited time offer. Today on Know How, learn how to give them the clamps. Know how it's the Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I am Father Robert Ballasare, and I'm Brian Burnett, and that is our yet unnamed uh, Corgi Ball, little Tater Tot. Yeah. It, just a, a placement name for this time, temporarily. Yes, yes, yes. Tater Tot. Uh, folks, uh, this is a little different kind of know how. Remember, we did Arduino 101 last week, but it was basically input and output. We showed you how to do LEDs. We showed you how to do buttons. A little bit of the, the important wiring schematics, stuff. Yeah, important stuff. How to get things in and how to get things out. Exactly. This week we want to show something a little bit different. Specifically, how do I control PWM objects with my Arduino? Now, PWM is servo, pulse servo with motors. Yeah, yeah, servo motors. Pulse width modul modulation. It's the way that we've been talking to our electronic speed controllers on our quadcopters. It's the right. way that we control servos, and actually, it does this. Care if you go to the the overhead view or the side view? This is actually just an Arduino development board on this, uh, this play box that uh, we're going to be doing in a future episode. I'm going to show you some of the things that I've done. It's a modular way of creating Arduino projects. This has been hooked up to a server. I did a little custom 3D printing thing that is it's kind of jank right now, but that's because it's still in progress. Yeah, it's a prototype. But uh, we've combined the knowledge, the little bits and pieces from our previous projects. It's using the same kind of buttons, and it's using the same LEDs to, to give me, uh, well, what's actually a pretty decent gripping system. The whole idea is I've got two buttons, one that opens and one that closes. You'll notice that when I push the yellow one, it activates the yellow light. When I push the blue one, it activates the blue light, so I can have an indicator of... Uh, Aren't you nifty? Yeah, ...what I'm doing. But also, if you look at the lights over here, go to that uh, side view, Kara. If, I, if those lights tell me when I've hit maximum range. So green means you're still good to go. But as I hit red, it means you can't go anymore. Yeah, you've hit your yeah. limits. Yeah, you've stopped. And it actually does it on the low side, That's too. That's cool. Yeah, so we're going to show you some of the bits and pieces that go into creating a project like this because the whole idea behind the Arduino 101 series is eventually you get enough basic knowledge where you can start combining little bits of your code and come up with projects like this. Yeah, I mean, it's not uh, too far-fetched to think that if someone were to learn all the components that we put together for this little project, that they could make that, uh, remember that chicken coop door oh, that yeah. we had talked yeah. about and put it on a timer? And Same idea. I mean, the whole, the only thing that you really have to change is the size of the servo motor, or yeah. you could use a stepper, which we're going to cover in a future episode of, of 101. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just the Arduino needs to know how to send the commands, and then the muscle gets to be provided by the size of servo or stepper motor that you buy. Right, right, cool. Right. So let's start from the very basic. How do we control a PWM device? We talked about PWM before on the show. Right, uh, When right. we were doing uh, our quadcopter series. The whole idea is if I'm using a digital pin, <laughs> I can't have a traditional analog output. So an analog output can, is basically infinite, right? Right. So from zero to five volts, I can have zero volts, 0 0.01 volts, all the way up to five. Right. And it's, it's, you've got, I mean, it depends on your resolution. How, how uh, specific can your device be about where it is? Mm -hmm. But you've got all those values to play with. Digital is different. There's on or and off. there's off. And then how many times you do it in between? Precisely, that's what PWM does. PWM takes a particular value and it takes a particular time. So it says one second, for example. Now, if, uh, if let's say you stay on for the entire second, it might think of that as 256. Mm -hmm. That's the, the 250, actually 255, the 256th value that it can do in an 8-bit register, mm -hmm. right? Now, let's say I have it on half the time. So it's on for half a second and then off for half a second. It's now 128. 
Right. Uh, let's say I only turn it on for just a tiny bit. That's how I can get all the values between zero and 255. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. It makes sense. It's, it's actually a really good way to, to, cheap way to communicate with devices. What the server will do is when it receives a PWM value, it has an internal uh, potentiometer. There's a little resistor in there. Mm -hmm. So it knows where the servo arm is pointing, and it will try to match the position of the servo arm with the incoming PWM uh, value. Okay, that makes okay. sense. So super simple, but now we need to drive this with that. Right, so how do we, we have to power it, we have to ground it, and we have to send it in information. Indeed, so let's go ahead and take a look at the code. Care, if you come over to my computer, this is a little program that I wrote. This is essentially the same thing as the servo example you can get out of the Arduino uh, IDE, the Sketch IDE. If you, in fact, if you go to File, to uh, examples and then oh, examples and then go all the way down to servo you've got two examples here knob and sweep hmm. and this will give you a very simple piece of code that will do essentially what we're going to tell it to do now not not as sophisticated but the same idea create an object and then use it to to send different pwm values to my servo okay but uh, we don't want to do that we want to use our example because it's it's a bit more tied into the ultimate a project that uh, project we're, doing, that we're yeah. doing here. Yeah. So let's let's start off. The first thing is, unlike the last episode where we just used uh, the uh, the built-in functions, we do have to include a library. So anytime you add a library to Arduino, it means you're expanding the functionality. You're you're getting the use of more functions and objects that someone else built for you. Right. Yeah. In this particular case, we're doing servo.h. Now the nice thing about this is that's that actually comes with the Arduino IDE. So even though I have to add the library, it's not like I have to download it anywhere. It's, okay. it's just automatically going to be in there. So I put pound side include, and then in, uh, in my little brackets, servo.h. Okay. Uh, what that will give me is that will give me a library that allows me to create an object called servo. Now, the, the nice thing about this is I can create multiple objects all assigned to different servos. So I could have an Arduino control uh, 10 different devices all of them are their own object, and every time I, I reference one of those objects, it references a particular servo. Okay, so you would do what, like servo one? Servo one, servo, servo two, two, servo three, servo, three. servo four. Yeah. In this particular case, there's only one servo, so I've only got one object. So but just leave it servo. Precisely. Let's say I was making a quadcopter, uh, and I have four electronic speed controllers, which again, they speak PWM. Mm -hmm. I would make four objects for the four speed controllers, and then I can address them individually to change what value is being sent to each one. That makes sense. Okay. okay. All right, so let's go on. I, now that I've created my object, and I've created the object, I've called it my servo. Uh, super basic test name. Right. Right? This is just sort let's of like, Let's not yeah, get complicated. Let's not get complicated. In fact, if you open up the example that Arduino gives you, I think they call it the same thing. They call it my servo. Now, we need a variable that will store whatever PWM value I want to send to the servo. And so in this particular case, I'm calling it servo val for obvious reasons. It's the value of the servo. And I'm going to set that to zero. So it's going to be at the, the lowest position possible. Okay. Okay. The next part is setup. You always have to do a setup. And in this particular case, what I'm going to do is I, I need to tell the object I created. I created a servo object called my servo, and I am going to attach it to pin seven. Okay. So I'm, I'm right here, I'm saying my servo dot attach. And then I'm putting in in uh, the parentheses digital seven. pin seven. Right. So, Gary, if you go over to the uh, the side view here, that means that I've got these three leads coming out of my servo. These two, so the the brown one and the red one, that's going to be my ground and my power line. Mm -hmm. So that's just going to go right here. It's going to go into ground and five volts. This where does this is the data pin? Where did I just say to put this? Seven. Seven. Right. So it's got to go into pin seven, which is right on the corner, like so. Whoa, Whoa it's already starting to move. I actually got, I have the code loaded in there already. Oh. <laughs> yeah, let me take that back out. Uh, but that's where it's gonna be plugged in. It's alive. It is alive. Super simple circuit, so power, data. That's it? That's yeah. all we need, okay? Cool. Now let's, let's keep going down the code here because we need to show a little, bit, a little uh, more. We've got a loop, a very simple loop. It's gonna use two for loops. And what I, what I want is I want to do something on the way up, and then I want to do something on the way down. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to start my servo value at zero. This for loop is going to continue until the servo value is uh, equal to 180. 
Okay. Actually, greater than 180. It's going to go to 181. Uh, and then every time the loop runs, it's going to run this code. So that's how this works. So you see how I have a, a curly bracket here and a curly bracket here? Mm -hmm. That for loop will continue to run everything between the, the two curly brackets until the uh, condition is met. Right, yeah, right. So for this until this. Okay. In this particular case, it's going to write to the, uh, the, the pin 7 the servo value, right? Yeah. Get that? Got that. Okay. So, and here, I'm going to say servo value is equal to servo value plus 1, which means it's going to go 0 the next time it's 1, the next mm -hmm. time it's 2, the next time it's 3, all the way up to 181. And then have a delay. And then delay. I'm going to wait for 10 milliseconds. And the reason why I want to wait is servos are not instant. They are a mechanical device. <laughs> uh, so what will happen is if I send it so many values so quickly, the arm actually won't have the chance to move before the next value comes in. Okay, and then it'll just kind of like go... It, it won't yells. be a smooth transition. Precisely. We'll see what that looks like. Uh, we'll, we'll actually deliberately mess it up so you can <laughs> see what that looks like. Uh, and, then, and then, so that's going to bring it all the way up to 180, and then I go the other way. I go 180 all the way back down to zero. Right, because you want to be able to move it back and forth. Back and forth. So let's go ahead and upload this um, on COM4. I'm going to be... Where is this? An Arduino Uno and load. So it's going to compile it, and then we're going to see it upload right about oh, now. Okay, it's uploading. Right meow. Right meow. And then it's done uploading. So let's go ahead and reconnect pin 7. So this is all it does. It's going to rotate that arm back and forth, and it's going to delay. Rotate um, the arm. Snap there back and rotate. It's not super complicated, but remember there's 180 degrees of rotation here. But what I'm sending it, I'm not sending it degrees. I'm setting it a PWM value. Right. The library I used is converting my degrees into a PWM value. Right. So it's doing the hard work. It's yeah. doing all the hard work. Because otherwise yeah. I'd have to find out exactly what, what is the value to send you, you yeah. know, 110. Zero, to zero, get one, you one, to one. move this far, yeah. Precisely. Precisely. Okay. Okay. Now, super simple code, but what happens if we start messing with it? Like, for example, what happens if I increase the delay to 50? So I'm going to send delay 50 on both sides. And let's also say, uh, I'm not going to go to 180. Let's say I'm only going to take this up to 100 mm -hmm. on both sides. Let's go ahead and reload that. So, Kerry, if you go to the overhead so we can see how that servo is moving. And now we're going to load our new code. One second, and you'll see what it looks like. So now I've, I've told it to wait longer and to move mm -hmm. less. And there we go. So uh, yes, go. way slower. Way slower. <laughs> and <laughs> you'll notice <laughs> it doesn't go as far. So, or at all. Yeah, it's going to wait. Hold on, hold on. Give it time, give it time. There and we go. Back. So it's not going the full 180 degree arc. It's, yeah. it's only where I'm, I've told it to go, from 0 to 100 rather than from 0 to 180. Okay, could you make it do a full 360? Uh, yes, I'd have to break it. You'd have to break it. What I would do is I would go in there and I would remo remove the potentiometer so it yeah. always thinks it has to turn. You can oh, do. They, okay. You can actually, do, if you want to turn this into a tiny little motor, continuous rotation motor, yeah. you can do that. You can buy continuous rotation servos. Mm -hmm. I just take the cheaper ones and take and the, the break. mod out. Yeah. You know? Okay. I didn't know you could do that. That's cool. Uh, so, but let, let me do one other thing. So let's let's make the uh, the range super small. So we're going to say from 50 to 100, and 100 to 50, and we're going to make the delay one. Remember, I said you needed to give it enough time to recover. Right. Uh, let's see what happens when you don't. So basically, there's no <laughs> delay, and I'm telling it to move a very slow arc. I'm uploading. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Why do you hate what me, creator? Done. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is actually really bad for the servo, too, oh, so I should probably... Oh, oh, let me make that stop. Uh, wait, Does wait, it uh, please you to see me uh, suffer? Uh, delay 100. Uh, what were we? Uh, make it stop. Make it stop. It right? was a horrible experiment. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, little servo. There but it's good go. to know what would happen. Ah, yeah. That's better. <sighs> okay, so now it's going to wait. It's going to be slower, and yet it's still going to have the much reduced arc. So it doesn't uh, go all the way. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. All right, just like last time, though, we don't want it to be messy. This, right. this code example is actually, there's a lot in the main program loop, which we don't want. No. And if you'll notice, if you go back to my screen, Kara, we do something that I really don't like, and that is we're hard coding values. So right. That's pin seven. This this is the delay in uh, in hard code. It's easy 
when my code is small like this, but if I were to expand my program and I wanted to change that value, I'd have to go through the entire program, find all the hard-coded values and change them individually. Right, and that'd be a huge pain. It's a huge pain, and we already have a way to not do that. We talked about it in the last 101 episode by using define. We're using constants that you define at the top of the program, and you just reuse over and over, which right. means if I ever want to change like the delay, rather than looking for the 12 places where the delay might be, I change it once, it automatically changes everything for me. And I have a feeling once we get to the point where we're making the claw, it'll be a lot easier to make adjustments at that, Precise, at that juncture. Yeah, because we're gonna do some fine adjustments. And again, uh, even, even our small little program there, at that point, it's long enough where it starts becoming t cumbersome right. to go back through all of the code and look for your hard-coded entries. Okay. So let's not do that. Cool. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use constants. Care if you go back over here. So we started off the same way. We're including a single library to control the PWM uh, output. Uh, we're also creating the same, the same object. So my servo. This is different. So what we've done is we've created a couple of constants. Servo pin. I'm setting it to seven. This is the pin that the servo is connected to. So rather than hard coding it down below, I have it coded up above. This also means that if for any reason, let's say I need to move this to pin two, Mm -hmm. Rather than having to go through all the places that say pin two, I just, sir, uh, Kara, if you go here, I just change seven to two. Done. So much easier to do this way. You, yeah. you really should get into the habit of, uh, of coding up here. The other reason why I like using constants like this is if I step away for a year and I come back to my code, <laughs> I've left, this is a note, even without any of the commenting, by having these defined statements, I'm telling my future self, these are the important things. These right. are the values you can change. Uh, rather than them have, having me go back and go, okay, wait, how did this work? Well, even, uh, I mean, in this case too, it's like if you want to share this code with someone and they want to modify it, it's way easier if you are, if you format it that way. You know, if you, if you wanted to give it to a friend and say, hey, try this project. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, if you combine these defines with a little bit of commenting, you know, Kara, if you go over, this is going to be in the actual code. So this is the pin to which the servo data line is connected. This is the speed at which the servo will turn. Lower value equals faster. So if you explain it here, not only do they have a list of the important values, but they have instructions on what they do. Right, right. Yeah. All right, so let's look at what they do. The second one is servo speed. And oh, by the way, uh, I'm a big fan of making names that make sense. It's, it's, you know, it's too easy to go var one, var two, var three. Right, and then and what, wait, what, what does it? that do? Yeah, so this particular one is, look, servo pin, yeah, it's probably the pin the servo is connected to. Right. Servo speed, it probably has something to do with the speed of the servo. Right. The next one is max PWM and min PWM. Can you guess what those might do? Uh, no, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's far too complicated. It's far too complicated. Uh, in this particular case, I'm talking about the maximum PWM value I want and okay. the minimum uh, PWM value I want. Oh, you mean the thing it says right there in the comments? Yeah, how about that? Yeah. Yeah, you weren't supposed to look at those, Brian. That's cheating. <laughs> I need to just guess. Uh, now, in this particular case, with this servo, I can do 180, 0. So I've already kind of constrained it. In fact, let's, let's set it back. So 180 mm -hmm. and 0. And this is just an easy way, and you're going to find out why we're doing this when we do the claw example. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to set maximum and minimum because th most of my projects will not be able to use the full range of motion. And what I don't want is I don't want the claw trying to keep closing. And then break itself. And break itself, yeah. right. This way I can say, look, this is as far as you can go and then stop. Right, you gotta set the parameters. Precisely. Got it. All right, so the next bit, we're creating a, a variable that will store the servo's position. We used this in the previous example. Uh, and then in my setup, notice how this has changed. In the previous example, this was hard coded to seven. In this particular case, I just say servo pin. Mm -hmm. And so if I change it, I just change it up above and it automatically changes in the setup. That's all I have in setup. In my loop, the only thing that's changed is I've changed all the hard-coded values with those constants that I set above. So for example, um, instead of saying servo value equals zero and then do it until servo value is equal to 180, mm -hmm. I just said start at the minimum PWM zero. and go until the maximum PWM. Right. And for the other loop, I say start at the maximum PWM and go until you hit the minimum PWM. Mm -hmm. that's and you don't have to change any of the values there because that's all up top. Yeah. That's all up top, it's all coded in. Uh, the other thing that you see here is servo speed. So I can change, remember how every time I changed the speed for the last example, I had to change it in two places. Twice, yeah. This time I only have to set it in one place. So let's go ahead and upload this and see what it does. 
compiling, and hopefully I won't get the strange vampire servo that we had last time <laughs> uploading. Here we go. So we're back to regular rotation. It's nice and Very smooth, cool. nice yeah. and easy. But this time, if I want to make any changes, and Karen, actually, can you do a split screen with the code and with yeah. the, uh, the servo? Uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change a couple of things. I'm gonna pull this pin, and I'm gonna put it into pin number, let's see, one, two, two. You madman. I'm a madman. Uh, and I also wanna change the speed at which this rotates and the angles th that it rotates through. Okay. Uh, now, we saw me do that in the other code, right. and it, it, I had to change in like five Individually, or six different places. Yeah. This particular case, all I have to do is say, my pin is no longer seven, my pin is two, here, I'm going to say, you know what, uh, instead of 15, uh, give me 3. And instead of 180, I'm going to say only go up to 130, and the minimum is, uh, say, 80. There okay, so you've constrained it to a very small amount of movement. Very narrow and rather fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've also changed the pin. And so if, if I've done this right, it means that I, I, all of the value should have changed, and this should upload. And let's see. And with my luck, I'm going to get an error message. No, it won't. okay, here we go. <laughs> there we go. So nice. not it's like as wagging possessed. its tail. Yeah, it's so happy. <laughs> we could actually we could connect this to the corgi's tail and then have it go back and forth. Oh, you little nub, so cute. Aww. Aww. So this again, get this into your habit of defining constants. Uh, not necessarily because it's the easiest way to code, but because. It's a better way to code. And actually, let me, <laughs> let me slow this down. A better, brighter way to code. Well, you know, again, for all those reasons, it's, it's easier to understand what you've done when you step back. It's easier to give it to a friend and let them understand what you've done. Right. And it's easier for you to troubleshoot. Yeah, especially if you step away for a long period of time and forget, like, why did I write this? Right, and, and it's going to sound like we're being a broken record, but I'm only being a broken record because once we start getting into, like, Arduino 104 and 5, mm -hmm. where we're doing home automation, <laughs> uh, your program will be too big right. for you to, to troubleshoot like that, to like, scan through each individual line. I mean, we're right. going to be talking about pages and pages, sketches upon sketches upon sketches. You've got to start using these, these tactics. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, when we come back, you know what I want to do, Brian? What's that? We did a little bit of basic servo movement, but I need to combine this with what we did <laughs> last week, because we also Buttons had some and output. LEDs Buttons and, and LEDs. Let's, yeah. let's, let's get into a little bit of that. Before we do that, though, uh, we got to take a moment. And uh, I'm actually very happy to, to have a new sponsor that is an old sponsor. They've come back. They, uh, they've, they've, they've had a little taste of know-how. <laughs> they've and come once back for more. Yeah, once you've had a taste of know-how, you, you can't, can't go back. You can't go back. You can't yeah. go back. <laughs> uh, of course, this, uh, this sponsor knows all about uh, real estate on the Internet. We know it's all about location, location, location. And on the Internet, it's all about URL, URL, URL. What you need is you need a partner. You need a business who understands that you need a, a domain, a place to be on the Internet that befits you, that befits your business, and more importantly, that people can find. That's why we're so happy to have Hover as once again a sponsor of KnowHow. Now Hover has 400 domain extensions, all the classics like .com and .net, I mean you need those, but they've also got quirky extensions for people who are maybe looking for hard to get names, but you can get them with say .pizza, .ninja, .horse, yeah those are available. Uh, once you find your domain, you can use the Hover Connect service to set up your domain automatically with your website in just a few clicks. You can also use it to get a more on-brand or professional email address. I mean, there's nothing quite like having a, a, a fantastic title and a wonderful business card, and then it says padre at gmail.com. You know, don't do that. Use your domain. Use your branding. Use your name. Now, your domain works with whatever email program you're already using, and when all you want to do is buy a do domain name or email address, you shouldn't have to opt out of page after page of add-ons that you really don't want or need. Hover understands that. That's why Hover only offers domains and email, so you can focus on finding a great domain name and then get back to working on your great idea. Uh, unlike most other domain providers, Hover includes free Who is Privacy with all supported domains to keep your information confidential. You don't want any stalkers or internet trolls to be able to peruse through your domain and then find some information that you left that you really don't want people to see. Hover knows this and, uh, well, they've got your back. And if you already have multiple domains scattered across other domain providers, and honestly, if you've been on the net for 20, 25 years, who doesn't? Then you can save money by bringing them all into one convenient place 
with Hover. Also with volume discounts, the more domains you have in your account, the more of a discount Hover will automatically apply to your balance. So folks, here's what we want you to do. We want you to find the perfect domain name for your idea. Go to Hover.com and use the promo code KNOWHOW at checkout to save 10% off your first purchase. That's Hover.com and use the promo code KNOWHOW. And we thank Hover for their support of KNOWHOW. All right, let's get back to the action. Uh, we've done our, our little uh, servo possessed thing going on. Yeah, it hasn't you, caught on fire yet. You really want it to touch the knob. You, you kind of want it to knock the thing over, don't you? What, like that? Why do you hate me, Chris? <laughs> it's like it's trying to, it's doing little push-ups. What did that servo ever do to you, Brad? <sighs> that One. Ser that servo was, it was, it was your bro. It was, your bro, bro. <laughs> it was, and then the machines turned on me. All right, so let's eviscerate this, because we are going <laughs> to need, we are going to need that circuit. Uh, it doesn't have feelings, and that <laughs> makes it feel sad. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't have feelings. <laughs> All right, Poor so we've got, uh, we've got a little play box here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping this is working because I think I may have ex accidentally shunted some higher voltage through this, and it's been behaving a little... Is that, is that bad, um, doing that? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Don't like it, but, you know, it was working earlier, so I'm hoping it's going to work now. Did you smell chicken? Because that's usually when... The there was no blue smoke, okay, good, but, good. but it, it did smell like tater dots. Mm. Yeah, that's yep. probably bad. Um, <laughs> All right, so what we want to do is we want to use the code that we've already created mm -hmm. along with some of the knowledge that we gathered from last week right. to make it so that these lights will tell us which way the servo is turning. Right. So is it right. on its upswing or is it on its downswing? Super simple, mm -hmm. but remember, these visual indications of what, a, of what software is doing are sometimes the best ways for us to figure out what's not working with it. Right, right, yeah. The well, so in for the final completed project too, you you'll have it where the light comes on when it's reached the end of its of its travel, right? Right, right. Well, which, yeah, exactly. I, I'm going to have multiple indicators on the the final project. Right, final which project. is important because you, you're wondering like, why isn't it going any further? Is something broken? Right, yeah, it's exactly. like, oh, the light is showing yeah, me that it can't showing. go any further. And the nice thing is that light is not going to be be determined by where the servo actually gets caught. The light is determined by the minimum and the, the maximum parameter value that you've set. That I yeah, set. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, exactly. Now, now you see where we're going, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We play the long game here. <laughs> the the yeah, long Arduino well. con. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's take a look at some of the basics. Uh, the LEDs, these are just LEDs. Remember, when you're, when you're plugging this in, the mm -hmm. longer LED is the, uh, the longer lead. <laughs> is the power. That's the power. Well, right. that's the power side. And power the, side. the shorter one is the ground. Right. right. And uh, this is, I like these breadboards because I got power rails. So it, as mm -hmm. long as I plug in power to this and this, that is all the way down the side. So I plug positive into here, and all of those first pins are positive, mm -hmm. I plug in ground there, and, and all, all those, those second are pins are ground. And it's, so it's the same with this red and blue line up Precisely. there. Precisely. So all, okay. all I've done is I've bent my LED in this, this is totally ghetto by the way, but it totally works, totally yeah. works. Mm -hmm. I've bent my LED, and I have the shorter uh, lead, uh, leg in the ground, and then I put, oh, ah! I put the ah! LED on its side. <laughs> I do this and You've broken it, my leg. Boom. So as long as I give power to that side, this should light up. And in fact, let's test that right now. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay. So we're going to give power to the rail by pulling it from the Arduino. I'm going to pull it from the the ground and the five volt pins that I have on my Arduino. Mm -hmm. And then here I'm going to put black as ground, ground. and the white is power. my voltage. Okay. And then I'm going to do this. So if I touch, if I put another jumper into power, I should be able to plug it in here, and that red LED should light up. Okay. Yeah. If or it should smoke. There we go. Let's see. Z wait, wait. Oh. Or not light up or, at all. Or not light up at all. Oh, because I plugged it into the wrong pins. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> reversed. Yeah, it was reversed. There we go. There, there you go. go. Okay, and then I should be able to do the same thing to green. There we go. Unlimited power. Unlimited power. Wow. Okay, so that tells me that my rails are hot. This is ready to deliver some power <laughs> yeah. to whatever device I might plug in here. Okay. Um, first, I need to get my servo connected. So let's go back to this. Remember, my servo's got three leads. Mm -hmm. uh, I, this brown one is going to be my ground. The red one is going to be my power. Oh. I just plug that straight here. So right. Actually, here, why don't you do that? Straight where? So uh, ground goes to that first rail, and oh, right. the voltage and then goes power. to the second rail. Okay, brown is ground. That's easy to remember. There we go. Power is oh, not and a see, rhyme. It's servo, it's servo just reset itself. 
Okay, and then this is going to be my data pin. And uh, why don't we go ahead and put that back in? Was Actually, it two no, or seven? Don't, don't do it yet, because otherwise it'll start rotating. We're going to put it into seven. Okay. Yeah. Right. We'll, or we'll, we'll code it to put it wherever it is. Okay. And seven. There we go. Okay. okay. So this, if, I, if I've done this right, I should be able to load the previous program. Hold Get on. it right. Get it tight. <laughs> uh, Arduino, if I load this now, uh, compile and upload, pop. Okay. Uh, the servo should be going, but it's not. Uh, hold on. Oh, well, you know seven? what? We set it to two, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Uh, there we go. Okay, so now this is the previous example. This was the last board. All it's going to do is it's going to rotate back and forth. But we want a little something, something out of this. And what we want is we want it to be able to tell us which direction it's swinging. Am I swinging open or am mm -hmm. I swing, swinging closed? Okay. And so what we've got for that is a different code example right here. Oh, no, right here. Boom. So we've added a couple of constants because we want to control more things. This has all the same declarations up above. I'm including the servo library. I'm making a servo object. I am setting my servo pin as 7. I'm setting my servo mm -hmm. speed as 15. I'm setting my max and my min PWM. But then, mm -hmm. just like last week, I have to define my LED pins. Right, OK. All right, so what I've done is I've said, OK, LED pin 1 is going to be port 8. OK. LED pin 2 is going to be port 9. OK. And again, the reason why I did that is because there's a little break there. It makes it's it easy to, figure easier out to which. see. Yeah. Okay. So, so go ahead and, and take yeah. So eight is right eight, there. Eight and you know make it red or green. It doesn't matter. There's okay. One of them. Uh, I'll do green since okay. it's closer. There we go. And put it there. And oh. and then what was the other one? Nine. Yeah. So right next to each other. Okay. So port nine and then. There we go. Okay. So the now I've got that. And if I want to change it, I could always just redefine it up here. So if, I, if those ports don't work for me, if I right. need those for something else, I can always just change it. Okay. The setup adds this. So I need to set pin mode. And again, if this is confusing you, go to last week's Arduino 101 episode, and you'll find exactly what this does. Mm -hmm. I'm opening up that pin uh, defined by LED pin 1, which was 8, right. and LED pin 2, which was mm -hmm. nine, 9. And then I'm telling pin mode, output. make it output. Mm -hmm. uh, because if I made it input, that's where I would be hooking up a button. It's right. listening. I'm not listening. I'm just saying. You want to you send out to it. Send yeah. it out. It's going to be sending out a PWM val a value, but to the serve uh, to the light, it's just going to look like voltage. Right, and then it should turn on. It should turn on. All right. So let's look at the loop. The loop is more or less the same. I've cleaned it up a tiny bit. So we've got four. We've seen all this before. Four, the minimum value, all the way up to the maximum value. And then in the second loop, we've got for the maximum value down to the minimum value. So it's going, this arm is sweeping up and then it's sweeping back. But I've also added this on the upswing. LED pin one is going to go high. LED pin two is going to go low. So one will turn on and one will turn off. Right. On the backswing, it's going to reverse. LED pin one is going to go low and LED pin two is going to go high. So right. when I load this code, what we should change, see change here is this will still be doing its thing. It will still yeah. be going back and forth. But when it reaches the final end of its motion, one of the LEDs will turn on. Well, it, it's going to, the, the second it starts turning that direction. Ah, uh, so, oh, so, so we haven't see, done uh, that one yet. I see, I okay. see. So let's go ahead and load this up, like so. It's going to do a little bit of compiling. Hopefully, I didn't make any mistakes. <laughs> and Never. uploading. There we go. There are no mistakes on know how, and only knowledge. Load me up. There we go. Okay, so this is. Now, okay, Brian, we have, we have an issue. Wait a minute. My lights are turning, but my uh, servo is not going anywhere. What's mm, going on? That's weird. So remember, where do I put all the important things in at, my code? At the top. At the top. Oh, look at that. Look where the servo pin is. Oh, seven. And where do I have it plugged in? Two. Okay, so okay. I, either yeah. I change it here or... Or just put it into seven. Boom. And again, Dang. perfect, perfect example of why you want all that important stuff up top because this is going to happen to everyone. It happens to me all the time. When it doesn't work the way that you want it to work, I always go back to the constants yeah. and then look at where, where are the constants being used? Are they being used properly? <laughs> right. If it's not moving, does that mean it's getting data? Like, you know, Precisely. Check, look Precisely. for that. Okay. But as you can see, so what's going on is every time it switches directions, the LED that's on switches. Right. And that's just because I've got digital writes mm -hmm. linked into each of those for loops. Pretty cool. Super, I mean, again, super simple, but 
you could see where this might be useful because sometimes you people need to have an at a glance view of what's happening inside of a piece of machinery. Right. Uh, you know, this is only turning a servo, but imagine if it was turning so fast that you couldn't tell which direction it was spinning. Right. This could actually tell you. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Yeah, clockwise yeah. is a counterclockwise. Super simple, easy way to do it, taking next to no time, next to no coding, and next to no equipment. Pretty cool. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. All right, but uh, we never stop there. You know that, right? No, of course. We've got to make it better. we we got to make it better. And so what we're going to do is I actually want to skip forward to the ultimate example because we're going to run a little bit long. Um, we want to install the full package, Brian. The full, yeah? Or no more of this, this mussing no. around. Yeah, time to amp it up to the next level. And you know what the next level always looks like? Bam! Killer robots. Yeah, that's right. That is the next level. We're, we're bringing definition. out the spice weasel. We're <laughs> kicking it up a notch. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> okay, so what, actually, before I plug this in, let's look at some of the characteristics of this. First of all, again, this is the modular device mm -hmm. that we've covered. This was the little nano box that I built a few weeks ago, but it's been attached to a, a breadboarding system for the Arduino. What this allows me to do is to change out just this top piece, and um, I can move from having switches and buttons up here to having claws. A claw. The, the claw. claw. Now, eventually, I will make this strong enough to, to grip things. Right now, it is so jank. It's, <laughs> these screws aren't, I mean, I think Aww. I lost most of the nuts, probably. And if you'll notice, this is at the wrong angle, and that's because I <laughs> stupidly, when I designed this last Aww. night, um, I forgot that I need to offset this gear, because otherwise, they want to be, you know, nub to nub. Right, and you need them to... To dovetail. Dovetail, right. yeah. So there's no way to get these both straight because all <laughs> those those nubs are in the same location. Right, which is something you don't think of until you put it together. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, that at, makes at sense. At 2 o'clock in the morning and you're like, I don't want to reprint this. No, this, no. Let's go. No, it's, so, it's pretty cool, though, for already. Yeah, so I've got one servo. So there's a servo embedded right here. Actually, let's turn around. There we go. There's the servo. It's the same little servo that so we just used. one servo is powering the whole, both arms, Yep, huh? yeah, because smart. since they're linked together by that, that gearing system, mm -hmm. as that servo turns, it's also going to turn the other side of the clock. So if you wanted to make it more powerful, I guess you could link, make two ser bigger servo? <laughs> yeah. Not just put two servo, or little servos? Or use like a, a bigger stepper motor. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. But I wanted to use the servo because the servo has positive feedback and I can tell it to go to a specific, specific position. The steppers stop, then, tend, it's a little bit, yeah, unless they're censored steppers, it's, yeah, it's more difficult. Okay. Uh, and then the only, the only other difficult part is to get in, getting the geometry of this right because if you just have a servo turn, all it does is wave it back and forth. Right. Uh, what this second link here does is it makes sure that I'm going to keep the same angle as the claw moves forward and back. Makes sense. Oh, and by the way, yeah. See, Smart. You know how jank it is? I, I just oh. lost a nut. Oh. It's okay. It's a weight <laughs> reduction. That's what I always This is actually think. how I blew out the other um, board. How is that? Because the nut dropped straight onto the... Oh, and then made contact? <laughs> Ooh. It didn't like that. <laughs> no, probably not. I had, some, I had sparks, but it still kind of worked, right? <laughs> it still kind of worked. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's unique. Uh, here, you can tell that we've, we've done a few things that are different. Same button setup that we used for last time, for, yeah. for last episode, except in this particular case, I've only got two buttons instead of three, because I only want to do two things. I want to either open or close. Right. Uh, look at last, last week's episode if you want to find out what, how we do this. But uh, remember, when I'm dealing with buttons, mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't just hook them straight up to the pins. I need a resistor. And it, this, this bears repeating. The reason why we use a resistor is imagine that you're in a dark room, mm -hmm. and you need to find your way from one side of the room to the other but you'd have no sensory input. It's completely dark. Right. You basically just stumble around. You could be anywhere in the room until you bump into something. Right. Once you bump into something, you could put your one hand on that wall. And, and that's what the resistor is? That's what the resistor is. The resistor is that one wall that says, okay, here is a point of reference. Right. I will give you the lowest voltage that's possible. Mm -hmm. And then when I short the pin, it gives you the highest voltage possible. Right. If I don't have the resistor, what will happen, and you'll see this if you, if you try to do it, mm -hmm. and you, uh, you use a serial output for, for debug, yeah. you'll see the value just kind of fluctuate for Everywhere. no reason. Like nothing's happening, but the value <laughs> keeps jumping. Right. And that's because you don't have a resistor. Interesting. Okay, yeah. good okay. to know. So, but let's, let's look at the diagram. Um, I've got <laughs> power going into my rails, just like you did. Mm -hmm. So I've got uh, my ground on this side, I've got my voltage on this side. For each button, I use a resistor to short across from the ground to the button. So that's actually my bridge. See how that's going from, from rail one right. to the first leg of that button. The second leg of that button is drawn up from the voltage. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I do have a little bit of current that's constantly running through the circuit, which, which kind of, it pulls it down. It mm -hmm. says, okay, this is my low, right? This 
On the other hand, this is from the pin. So when I push this button, it shorts the full voltage through that pin, and that's when the pin goes high. Right, okay. Right. So as long as it's at the low voltage, because it's going through that circuit, it's low, the mm -hmm. second I push this and short it, it goes high. Right, and you've defined the, the, the pin numbers on the Arduino and the software. Precisely, and we'll see that in just a bit. So I did the same setup for both buttons. Now the LEDs, it, it, exactly what we just did. Right. So I just need one pin, the shorter pin, to be on the ground side, mm -hmm. and then each of these are linked to one of these pins that are from 8, 9, 10, and 11. Cool. It's easy circuit, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Super easy circuit. And then the uh, servo was set up the same way. I just need power and I need to know what port it's plugged into. So let's take a look at the code. Code is a tiny bit more complicated, but because you saw the previous examples, it shouldn't be crazily so. Mm -hmm. all right. So what we've got is we've got a way to define all of the important pieces of our code. In this case, I've got my two buttons. So I'm using the same definitions that I had from the last episode of, Code, of Arduino 101. Right. Button pin one and mm -hmm. button pin two. I'm setting the first one to for pin. Pin two. And the second one to? To pin three. Good. Got and it. then the next thing, the next four things I'm defining here are my LEDs. I want four LED lights. Eight, nine, 10, and 11. Eight, nine, 10, 11 assigned to pin one, two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. okay. And remember, the reason why we're doing it up here is because I'm telling the future me this is important. Take a right. look at this, right? Okay, so I also need to define the pin that the servo uses. We've already seen that. I'm defining it as servo pin seven. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I also, while we're at it, uh, I'm setting the speed of my servo. So ten. I'm setting it for 10, which is kind okay. of a basic value. And max PWM is 110, minimum is 24. Right, and actually so I'm gonna, you know what, that. because we wanna play a little bit, I'm gonna change that to the default. So 180 and zero. And you're gonna see why we're gonna do this in just a bit. Uh, the next part we've seen already, I need a place to store the value of the servo. And then I need another variable that's gonna tell the state of the button. And we saw this in last week's episode. I need a place where when I press the button, the value is temporarily stored until a function can do something with that value. And it'll be set to zero, okay. Yeah, yeah, there By we default. go. Yeah. Uh, set up, I'm opening up my serial port because I'm gonna need to debug. I need <laughs> right. to look at the values coming back from my Arduino, and you'll see why we have to do that in just a bit. Okay. Everything else, we've already done. So uh, I've created the, uh, the uh, uh, object that the servo is gonna be talking to. I'm setting the pin mode for my LEDs. I'm setting them as output. And then I also need to set the pins for my buttons, and my pins are gonna be Pin, button pin one and button pin two. Which were defined up above and I'm setting them as input because those ports, those pins are gonna listen, not push out. Right, whereas the LEDs are outputs, yeah. Precisely, precisely. All right, so this is what I love. If you folks, anytime you give me an example like this, I, I, I just really like what you do. <laughs> That's my main program loop. That's, That's what it. you want. You want it as small as possible because it, uh, it, it makes everything more modular. Because right. now I have a bunch of functions that I could use in other programs that are not bound into the main uh, program loop here. Very cool. So all I'm doing is I'm call calling button read for uh, the first button, mm -hmm. I'm calling button read for the second button, and then I'm calling the function to move the servo. Perfect, yeah. That's it. All right, so let's look at- Elegant. It's, uh, yeah, we like elegant. Let's look at what that's actually doing. When I call button read, notice how I have this, int button, int LED. In a function in C, which is what this is, when I'm doing this, I'm telling the function when you run, there are going to be two values that are passed to you from the function that calls you. And that's defined up here. So when I call the function by putting button read, mm -hmm. I'm gonna pass it the value for button pin one and LED pin one. And button pin one is pin two, and LED pin one is pin eight. So I'm passing it two and eight. Two and eight are going to be put into the variable button and the, ver mm -hmm. and the variable LED. Mm -hmm. Now it's gonna read the button. And all I have to do is I'm going to use the function called digital read, which says, okay, digital read button. And I already know button is pin two. So it's gonna say digital read pin, pin two. two, take whatever value you get and put it into the variable called on off. Perfect, yeah. Okay, now I have a conditional statement. This is my if statement. If the, the value that I just got from the button right. is high, 
it actually looks high, right. equal, equal high. Mm -hmm. Then do this. Print high. All the way up to, remember, between the two, so from that bracket to that bracket, it does everything. But only if that button comes back as high. Okay. If it does not, then do this. Then do the else, and the else <laughs> just says low. Print low, yeah. Right, okay. So that's how I get values from my buttons. Right. Now the question is, what does the program do with those values? <laughs> well, those values get not passed to move servo, but move servo, if, if we go down to this function, this is exactly what we wrote in the previous programs but I've now broken them off into their own function. I see. So it's just going to use a couple of the things that I've just defined as constants. My max PWM, my min PWM, the, the pins that my individual devices are connected to, mm -hmm. and the pins that the servo is connected to. Oh, okay, okay. Does this make sense, or am I going too fast? No, 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 this makes sense. It's just that uh, you've laid the foundation, and now we've built almost to the top. Now. All right, yeah. so let's, mm -hmm. we're going to go into some final adjustments because you're not done. We, this code will work as is, mm -hmm. but in any project, we have to calibrate it. We have to make sure it's going to work the way we want. Debug. I'm going to show you a little bit of why, why you want to do that. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, Brian, you know, what, you know what we need to do? What's that? We need to thank another sponsor of this episode of Know How. And uh, it's a sponsor that I love having on the show because I actually bought their product way before they sponsored the Twit TV network. Yeah, that's right. For your parents. I, my parents. And of course... We're talking about the Ring Video Doorbell. Now, Brian's going to show you what this kit looks like. It is a fantastic piece of gear. The idea is that this replaces your current doorbell. And the nice thing is it has an internal battery. That's why it can ring, even though it's still in its box. Or you can run it off of house AC current. It's got a little adapter plate that will allow it to adapt that voltage and make it so that you never have to charge it again. Now, what does it do with that charge? This is the magical thing about the Ring Video Doorbell. This is actually a high-definition camera coupled with a microphone, a speaker, and a, a, a Wi-Fi connection device so that it can hook up to your local network. Every time someone rings the doorbell or every time someone triggers the motion sensor, it will talk to your mobile device, to your tablet or to your phone, and it will let you know that someone is at the front door or someone is in the foyer. Oh, you can accept the call which looks just like a, well, a call hold for, for your home. You'll get an image on your phone that shows you who was there, when they were there, and you'll be able to speak with them in a two-way conversation. The Ring Video Doorbell is really the best way to make your house smart. Now, most importantly, and this is the reason why I bought it for my parents, is because I was a little bit worried. They live in not a retirement community, but sort of a, a golden age community. And there are some <laughs> very unscrupulous folks who will take advantage of the fact that many of these residents are gone for many hours of the day. They'll ring the doorbell, and if no one answers, they know it's, well, it's free to burglarize for the next few hours. But the Ring Video Doorbell has been proven to stop burglaries before they happen. And in fact, we used it to find a neighbor who was stealing power from us in the <laughs> summer so that he could power his, uh, his air conditioner while my parents were gone. And we also used it, we, we turned in the video to the police department because they used it to, to convict a person who was stealing packages from the house across the way. Now folks, it's not just the doorbell. Ring now has what's called the Ring of Security. They understand that it's not just about what's going on in your front door, so they've now included a stick-up cam, a solar panel, a chime, and this, which is the solar sign. The kits will include all of these devices, and it really makes it into a ring of security. The Pro Kits include the, the slim video doorbell, plus a crystal with, ha, with its crystal clear 1080p HD video, a wireless and weatherproof HD stick-up cam, so you can keep an eye on parts of the house that aren't a door, plus this, which is an illuminative solar-powered sign, because the first step in preventing burglaries is telling burglars that this is not the lowest hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. The Ring video doorbell and stick-up cam install in just minutes and working together they provide 24-7 monitoring of your entire home, whether you're in the living room or thousands of miles away. Folks, join the millions of homeowners who protect their home with Ring. And for a limited time, Know How listeners can get up to $150 off one of the Ring of Security kits. Just go to ring.com slash knowhow. That's ring.com slash knowhow. And we thank Ring for their support of Know How. All right, Brian, so we've got the code. Got the code. We know how this was assembled. All know the electronics work. But that's not the end of it. So well, you don't just plug it in and go? 
Uh, you could, <laughs> but you'll probably burn something out pretty quickly. Oh, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and upload this code because I want to have the new values that I just entered in. Mm -hmm. Hold on. And do, 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 uploading and done uploading. So now I've got control. Nice. So this button will move the claw back. This button will move the claw forward. Perfect. And as you can tell, I've got this. This. So this tells me which way it's moving, just like mm -hmm. we had in the previous example. But I also have these two lights. When it's green, that means I'm still within range. When it goes red, it means I'm now out of range. <laughs> right, you've hit the limit. I've hit the limit. But unfortunately, if you'll notice, oh. it stops way before I hit the limit. And that's because the physical claw cannot move the entire rotation of the servo. Oh, OK. So, look, so this can go here. Yeah. But notice how that's not red. Right. So there's still more that the servo can, can move, but if I still keep trying to move, all it's doing is it's just it's compacting against pushing itself. Pushing against itself, and, yeah. yeah. It starts stripping out gears, which no, is no, a bad no. thing. Okay, so this is where you set in the, the length of how far it'll go. Precisely. So let's open up my serial monitor, and my serial monitor... Oh, hold on. Whoa. I'm having, a, I'm having issues with my serial monitor. My serial monitor should be giving me back values, but... Uh, Hopefully this is not the board I... Yeah, I did kind of blow this one out. Um, <laughs> Was this the board you dropped a, a screw on? Yeah. Uh, um, hmm, that's, that's interesting. So what it should be giving me right now... Is high, low, high, low? It should be giving me high, low, and it should be telling me um, what is the value of the servo. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have to redo this. Let's hopefully it'll come back. Um, and again, folks, this is why you really should buy genuine Arduinos. <laughs> <laughs> Sit up. No, it's not. So I'm going to have to reload the code. Yeah. And this one keeps losing its firmware, by the way. I, I think I really did kill the board. Well, I guess the nice thing is that we have like six of these boards. We could always swap it out. We can always we swap to. it out. But now, let's see. If, is it back? Come on. No. No, okay. it's got that weird value. And yeah, it's, it's giving me a lot of junk. Well, okay. What would be happening if I had not blown out the... Uh, the line that Do you was, want to try and swap it real quick? Nah, it's okay. We, it's, it's not that important because I can actually explain to them what we're doing here. Because I can, I can, I can make move. this. Oh, see, it died again. I can make this go only as far as the servo should allow. Right. Uh, so, for example, hold on. Let me finish uploading. That I know that is actually not 180. That is closer to 110. Right. So, if if you go back to my code screen, care what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my uh, maximum right here for about 110 and I'm going to set my minimum because if you notice it's the same thing on the other side if you, if you come back to the overhead camera as I'm opening up the claw it hits the physical restraint way before the electronic restraint right. so I'm going to set this for say 40 so I'll upload this code and now I shouldn't get an excess of, uh, of movement in the servo after I've made physical contact so it's, there we go. See, so notice how it gives me the red indicator almost immediately. Right. They've so, gone too far. Yep, that's like, okay, don't go any further. And furthermore, because of the way that I've coded this, it won't let me move. So if I push this button, nothing's happening. The servo is not <laughs> struggling more. Right. It, that, that red light is an indicator that the code is saying, nope, not nope, moving. That's as far that's and as, that's, far as I'm gonna go. that's a safety that helps it so it doesn't destroy itself. Yeah. Precisely. And if I move back, same thing. So right there, even though technically I could make this move back a little bit more, mm -hmm. that's as far back as it will let me go. Right. So this is why it's also nice to have those constants because I can redefine them on the fly as I need to change things about my project. Right, so if you change your claw to a different uh, formation or whatever, like it has a Precisely. different range of motion, then you'll want to be able to change the values. Exactly, yeah. and, and normally if I hadn't blown out the board, what we would see <laughs> is we would see my serial monitor like yeah. we did last week's episode, Right. and it would show me the values. I could see, okay, keep going until right there, and right. then it would, it would give me, say, oh, the value is 112. Right. And then I can go to the minimum and say, right there, and the value is 43. Right. And I could put in those values, and I would have absolute assurance that this servo will never move to the position where it starts to rip itself apart. Okay. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned, because this is not done, because I still have a lot of work to do on this claw, <laughs> those values are going to change. Right. But it's, it's pretty cool. cool. Right? No, I like it yeah. a lot. Even though it's you know dropping nuts everywhere. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
we'll, we'll it's there. yeah, it'll be perfected. This is just revision one, and then eventually it'll become the T1000. Precisely. That's just how it works. <laughs> and liquid metal. Right. And <laughs> just make sure don't put like define takeover world in your code. Equals yeah. equals high. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, we know that this was a lot of information, and actually this will be the the last Arduino 101 that we do for a couple of weeks. We mm -hmm. want to let you sort of simmer in this. That's right. Let it soak in. Let it soak in. We've got basic input output. We've got servos. We still have to do stepper motors, mm -hmm. but try this, and I will be posting all the code onto our show pages along with the STLs for this as soon as I finish it. I want to make it a little bit better because I don't want you assembling a jank model. But Brian, but where do they find that? You already gave me a jank model. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I'll have to go print a better that's one where the later. Models go. Oh, yeah. I, that's where I get all the leftovers. <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, if you want to find the non-jank STL files, you want to go to our uh, show page, and that's at twit.tv/kh. And yeah, like Padre said, you'll find all the different links to the parts that you'll need, and especially for a show like this where we've got a lot of code that you'll need. Um, you want to go back through our, our backlog of episodes and check out the previous ones to, to really be able to follow along. And the best way to do that is to subscribe. Yes, yes. And also, you can find us on Google+. Plus. Actually, that's Google probably Plus? the best place to find us because we've got a community there of over 10,000 know-it-alls. We the call key them does. The key does. Mm -hmm. uh, these folks are everywhere in their maker journey. We've got people who have been doing it for years and years. We have people who are brand new to the game, and it's just a fantastic conversation between geeks. If you need help with a project, mm -hmm. if you want ideas for a project, or if you are an elder statesman and you want to pass your knowledge down to future generations, go to Google+. Plus. Join the know-how group. We'll approve you right away, and uh, we'll just be part of the fun. That's right. That's right. But if you want to uh, interact with us on a more personal level, you can always follow what we're doing outside of know-how and the, some of the weird pictures and things that we post, a lot of corgi memes and gifs and things like that. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at cranky underscore hippo. And you're going to find me at Padre SJ. And we've got one more member of the crew who is not Alex today. It's, uh, it's Kara, uh, right? Kara. Kara. She's oh, awesome. Kara. I'm here in my corner. Aww. Kara's corner. No, that's Padre's corner. Kara's <laughs> corner. Kara's <laughs> corner. corner. See what you did there. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Kara, where do they find you again? You can find me on Twitter at Kara080. Thank yeah. you. She's also the main TD for TNT. That's right. And the camera woman for screensavers Everything. still? Oh, no, no. She's the... She's a producer. Oh, I'm a that's producer right. now producer. on screensavers, actually. And I actually just, uh, I'm going to begin training to TD the screensavers. Whoa. So Anthony, who was recently made a producer, can be more of a real producer and just monitor the show. You know what that means, Brian? <laughs> it means so, now you can say no because there's something There's going to be three of us that could do the show. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah, basically, that. we're trying to help you out, Brian. So you're welcome. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. trying to help a brother Although out. a little, little less job security then, right? I know, right? It's like, <laughs> on, on the one over. hand, it's like, oh, awesome. Now I can take vacation. Yeah. On the other hand, it's like, oh, wow. Now they can, I can replace take me. Oh, I can be replaced. Now yeah, you can. <laughs> don't forget it. <laughs> Anyways, folks, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I am Father Robert Balliser. And I am Brian Burnett. And now that you know how. Go clamp it. Clamp. Clamps! Give it the clamps. Give it the clamp. No. I'm gonna clamp them. No. Bring them over. Clamp them up. <laughs>